Lisa with Luna Moth Creations and I have a ton of boxes. A ton of boxes. <laughs> I mean obviously we're gonna do just one in this video but so today I have the Sacred Space Crate. I'm super excited about this because um, the owner don't want to say her name wrong. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it just in case I say the wrong name. Anyways, they were moving. I think she was moving to a different house. Plus, I feel like her business location was moving to and she's expanding. So we had skipped the month of April. So our last box from Sacred Space Crate was in March. And so now we have May's. So that's what we're doing today. I'm excited. So let's start from the beginning. Hi, I'm Lisa. If you're new here, I like to do witchy subscription unboxings. I have one self-care box that I do. And then I also love to do tarot and oracle deck unboxings and reviews because I'm a tarot reader. So anyways, okay. Crap, I don't know what I did with my banana. Oh well. Because you know, y'all, I work nights, so it's morning time for me. You have to start your day off with, um, there's more tape on here I thought, than I thought. You have to start your day off with um, a monster energy drink and a banana. All right. Oh, and of course, if y'all are not new and you're one of my returning friends, I thank you for coming back. All right, so I don't know what's going on with that. Anyways, okay, so when I open it up, we just have the box and there's their logo, which I love. It's a big box today. All right, what is right on top? Right on top we have candle colors. So it's kind of a blank Book of Shadows page and it has um, each color and I guess you'll write your own correspondences on there. So that's a Book of Shadows page. And we have the moon in the zodiac. So with Sacred Space you always get a monthly calendar and then on the back it talks about uh, the moon in whatever um, sign. So not necessarily what's going on this month but just so you can see like say we had a full moon in Aquarius, it says Aquarius embrace free thinking and personal freedom during this time. People around you may start to act selfish during this time as well. So anyways, um, the May calendar. So we're actually kind of late. I feel like we should have had a, a June, she should have gave us a June one. Anyways, I don't know. I feel like hers usually come before like at the very beginning of the month. Anyways, so this has everything in here, like Beltane was on the first, um, the last quarter moon, new moon, da 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 da. So, but I do look at the artwork right up there. How cute is that? All right, and then we've got our paperwork from her. Oh yeah, I remember she said that, um, that this month's theme was spell casting. Okay, so I'll read the top portion and then we will not um, read the rest until we get our goodies out. So it says, this month's box is about spell casting, but most importantly, how to tap into your magic by writing and most importantly, perfecting our own spells. This takes time, patience, and lots of practice, but it is all worth it when you have conjured up the perfect fail-proof spell that you can always go to when needed and feel confident including it into your spell book for future generations. No one wants a spell book full of spells that don't work, so let's fill them up with your real magic. There is no more powerful magic than what is inside of you, so when you can tap into that, you are going to be successful in getting what you want in life. Success usually requires practice. You're not going to become a gold medalist in gymnastics unless you put a ton of practice in. Same rule goes for spell casting. Trial and error are just part of the process, so don't be afraid to fail a few times before you get it right. Sorry, y'all know I just woke up, so. And then my phone's already making noise over there. The first step in spell writing is to know your intention. Be very detailed in what you want the outcome to be. Meditate on your intention and ask for guidance from your guide, ancestor, higher power, or whoever you turn to 
for guidance. Don't leave this step out. Meditation is one of your main muscle groups for spell casting. Make a list of items that you can borrow energy from during your spell that will help get you to your goal. There's a good chance that you will change out several of these items on your road to perfecting your spell, so none of these items are written in stone as of yet. Go with your instincts on this. The meaning of items is simply what it means to you. For example, the color green may represent money to you, but the color gold represents money to me. Since I am pulling the magic for myself to use in the spell, I would use gold instead of green for a money spell. It is important to pick objects that will make you feel, that will make you really feel the energy that you want to reach. Write and plan your spell. See below. Practice your spell. Don't just say the words. You need to feel your spell with every fiber of your being. I'm sorry guys, my allergies are already starting. Fiber of your being, so make sure you are able to zone out from any outside distractions. You want to be aware of your breath and your heartbeat until you can go into a trance-like state with focus on nothing but your spell. When you perfect this part, then you are well on your way to some powerful outcomes to your spells. Keep a journal of your spell practice. Okay, we'll read the rest in a minute. Yeah, last night I did my um, new moon ritual and set my intention for this lunar cycle. So we have some dragon's blood incense. Dragon's blood is so yummy. Do -do, speaking of, let's go ahead and light it. My phone's blowing up. Oh, so I hurt my elbow. I don't know. I don't know what exactly is going on, y'all. But my right elbow is giving me fits. Like, I'm having a hard time doing a lot of things with my right arm, which I'm right-handed, so that kind of sucks. Um, I was just looking at my nails just then. Sorry, ADD moment. Um, sorry, they look like shit. So if you see them in camera... I haven't gone to the nail lady yet. <laughs> Did y'all just see that? <laughs> that did not want to burn out. <laughs> okay. Mm, set this back because otherwise I'll probably catch my hair on fire and that'll be fun for y'all to watch. So I'm going to grab my phone because it keeps dinging. And, you know, if it's something important, so talk about yourselves. It'll be two seconds. Okay, I'm back. Did you guys see my LuLaRoe leggings? Um, of course, it's nothing important. <laughs> okay. All right, moving right along. You guys are here for um, this box, not for my, uh, my antics. Or maybe you are. I don't know. Okay, so right on top, we have crinkle paper floor. <laughs> I wish I had something to put it in. Okay, we're just gonna start grabbing stuff. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, look guys, we've got candles. So we have a um, black sachet. And we've got pretty much every color of the rainbow in candles, y'all. Okay. So they're just uh, little chime candles. Of course, the white one's hard to see. I totally just bought, like, a huge box of an assorted thing. But that's okay. You know what? You These you can always use them. Okay. Then we have a turmeric salve, anti-inflammatory, turmeric, grapeseed oil, and beeswax. Sorry guys, my pat battery in my camera died like right in the middle of what I was saying. <laughs> so let's get back to this, the turmeric salve. I'm actually really excited about this because it's anti-inflammatory. So while I was waiting for my camera to charge, um, I put it on my elbow. So, yay. All right. So now we have some post-ritual grounding tea. It has catnip leaf. Lavender flower, peppermint leaf, holy basil, which is Tulsi leaf. So that is that. Let's see. Perfect. Of course, I can't smell it through there. I'm not going to open that right now. All right. 
think we've got our um, one of our herbs. Oh, my incense is still going. All right, so we have some vervain, which I actually used last night. I mean, not this one, obviously, but anyways, I love these little jars. They're so cute. And my camera doesn't want to focus now. Anyways, they're super adorable because they sit right up. But yeah, I used some vervain in my my spell last night. Oh, I just don't know what the cat. Okay, we'll get this because it looks like another herb. Protection Circle Casting Salt. Nice. There's that. You guys see? So there's just some little herbs in there and salt. Super awesome. Okay. We have this black velvety bag. Feels like there's a wand in here. Oh, let's see if I can get it without breaking it. <gasps> Fun! So it is like a gold color and with black. Let's see if we can see. How fun is this? Again, I have to go like this just so you guys can kind of. There we go. Cool. Mm, okay. Did it work? <laughs> I have another one right here that looks extremely similar. This one's, um, it's black and it's got like a. <laughs> whatever anyways you guys see it so this is one that I already own I've got like a couple wands but anyways ding cool and then we've got our pretty bag to put it in okay I think there's only one thing left Let's make sure nope there's okay you didn't see what I just pulled out I figured there was a crystal in here we have a small sachet and um, I, I don't know if this is a very small piece of Labradorite and there's just not a lot of Schiller in it. So this is my little guy. He's, it's hard for you guys to see. He, it's kind of gray and black, kind of swirly. I thought I saw like a tiny bit of Schiller, but it may be my lights in here. I'm just making that shit up. I, don't, I think I see it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but I thought I saw some in there. So maybe it's Labrador. Let me make sure there's nothing else. I guess we'll find out when we read our thing. But then the last thing I just opened was this, which looks like a book of shadows. Let me undo this. Oh, okay, maybe that's attached. Oh, I'm gonna have to like lay this out. Or are you supposed to roll it out? Maybe you're supposed to roll it out. Okay. So it says, I don't know if you guys can see it, it says the magic is in you. It is, um, obviously blank pages that are, um, handmade paper. So just blank handmade paper. Um, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if you just, I don't know if you're supposed to roll it up or if you're supposed to just, you know, 
fold this over. Maybe you're supposed to roll it up. I mean, because it does have the, the thing. So maybe that's how you're supposed to do it. Maybe it'll tell us in the paperwork. So anyways, yay. A handmade book of shadows. Okay, I'm just going to keep it rolled because it seems like it, I mean, obviously it's been that way, so it wants to do that. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. We're going to roll it back while you guys sit there and watch me. You are so bored right now. Unless you like my singing. Nobody does. My kids always tell me to stop. Okay. Let's move this out of the way for a second. And find our paperwork. Custom Leather Spell Journal. This beautiful, genuine leather journal. The Whatever. Are custom designed so that they are exclusive to subscribers to this box. I chose the words, the magic is in you, that is on the front cover so that you will always be reminded where the magic lies. I've always admired these long leather journals that roll up and stack on a shelf, so I'm so excited that I was able to design one for you to use in your practice. Cool. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. It will sit up somewhere. So I can just pull it out. Um... Where did we go? Don't worry about the shape when you unroll the journal. Lay it flat on a table, and after a day or so, it will flatten out by itself so that it will be easy to write in. Okay, maybe I should do that. Um, this journal is for writing your detailed spell work. Make sure to draw out your layout of your spell circle in detail. Include any objects, herbs, candle color use, etc., along with any words, chants you are using to draw out the magic. Include Date, day of the week, and time of day you perform the spell. Moon cycle at the time that you cast your spell. Include anything else that would impact the environment and energy of your spell. Give your spell a deadline for your outcome to come to fruition. Write the outcome. If you didn't get the outcome you asked for, then meditate on what needs to be changed, tweaked to the spell. Start from the beginning and continue to tweak the spell. Using your instincts until you receive the outcome that you intended to have. Oh my god, I'm so itchy. Don't worry about using too many pages for one single spell. It's better to use the entire book on one spell and get it perfected so that you can transfer your final spell to your personal book of shadows. Once you get your spell perfected, it's a good idea to practice a spell to reverse the effects of the spell just in case it's needed. Practice this every day and you will become stronger at spell casting and your next spells will require less time to perfect. If you are a beginner at spellcasting, then start with a very simple spell. Work your way up to the more complicated spells. Even though I transfer my final spell into my Book of Shadows, it is important to keep your spell journal so that you have all the outcomes documented and so you and your future generations can reference back to them for future spell work. Fabulous. Custom wood with hand-sewn protective bag. Custom wood wand with blah, blah, blah. These handmade wands were custom made exclusively for this box. No two will be exactly the same since they are handmade and hand painted. These wands are made from bamboo. It was important to me that they are made from an earth element as opposed to all the resin wands that are so widely available. Spend some time sharing your energy with your wand after you consecrate it. Your wand should become an extension of your energy. Never let anyone besides yourself handle your wand because you only want your energy attached to it. Use your wand to cast your circles before your spells and rituals. Imagine a light coming out of the end and draw your circle clockwise to close it. Going counterclockwise to reopen the circle. There are many ways to use your wand with your practice, so use your intuition and let it guide you. My entire family coven pitched in this past month and helped me make the protection bags for your wand. Oh, how cool is that? So there's a lot of magic attached to it. Store your wand in these velvet black bags while not using what? While not using to protect it from outside energies. Then we have our spell candles. This month I wanted to include several different colored candles so that you can work with the different colors in your spells. Since starting this business and having such limited time to spend on spell work, these chime candles have become my favorite candles to use. Same. They are large enough to carve names or desires on them, but small enough to speed up the spell. 
Use your own instincts and intuition when deciding on a candle color to use in a particular spell. And then we have our um, spell candle journal page. And it says the journal page is for your reference. It is important in ca spell casting that you use energy that you connect with. Hold each colored candle in your hand and write down what energy you are receiving from it. For example, for the green candle, I would write money, move forward, earth, jealousy, etc. Anything that I relate to that color. Use this sheet as reference for your spell writing and spell casting. Then we have our vervain, uh, verbena, officinalis. Also known as the Enchanter's Herb, has a long association with magical and spiritual practices. Going back in time to the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans, as well as the Celtic Druids, Vervain's primary role was to protect believers against evil spells or negative energy and to purify sacred spaces such as altars, ceremonial implements, temples, and private dwellings. It's been used for centuries in love spells and in a variety of potions. It is also hung in the home to protect against weather. Vervain brings peace to the home when sprinkled around the house, and when fresh sprigs of vervain are placed on the dinner table, the conversation will remain calm and non-confrontational. Charms can be made of vervain to attract money, and when used in a dream pillow, it brings dreamless sleep. The juice of the plant is said to awaken psychic ability, and a sprig placed in the cradle will grant a baby a lifetime of wisdom and happiness. Awesome. An old myth relates that vervain can determine if a sick person will live or die by placing the plant against the patient and asking them how they feel. Positive answer will lead to a positive outcome, yet a negative answer may lead to a poor one. I chose this herb for this box for its versatility in spell casting and for its high vibrational energy. Very nice. Then we have our protection casting salts. This is not your typical black salt because it is made with lavender and salt, but it is a great recipe that is very effective in protecting your spells if you need to step away for any period of time. When you are working on perfecting a spell, it can take days, months, and sometimes years to perfect it to your liking. Therefore, you may not want your spell area disturbed. You can cast a circle of protection casting salts around your spell work, uh, work spell work area, until you return. Make sure to open your protection circle by removing your salt when you're ready to work with your spell again. Lavender is not only one of the most protective herbs, but it also triples in magic when it's with its grounding into in intuition enhancing abilities. Oh yeah, I was wrong about the um, crystal and I'm not surprised. It is a uh, larvikite. Larvakite is, my God, that dog will not shut up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Larvakite is attuned to the root and third chakras. I think I have some Larvakite. Mine um, have a little bit more, I think it looks a little bit more greenish, but I could be making that up, but I'm pretty sure I have a Larvakite. Uh, attuned to the root and third chakra, third eye chakras, making it a very valuable stone to use in your pre-spell meditation. Larvakite is also very protective, as well as a great grounding stone. I'm like talking louder because the dog is barking. It is cleansing to the subtle bodies and facilitates a strong connection with the energies of earth, helping to connect with the spirits of nature. Larvakite stimulates inner visions and enhances our psychic abilities also linked to the astrological signs of Aquarius. That's me. It is connected to the elements of earth and wind and vibrates to the number two. I would stop my um, recording with y'all um, because of the dog, but I'm telling you, he's not going to stop. So anyways, dragon's blood incense, which I am, it's almost done burning over here. It smells beautiful. An exotic earthly fragrance with subtle notes of pine needle, Arabian sandalwood, musk, amber, and dragon's blood. The aromatic bright red sap produced by the Dracania Draco tree, hand dipped dragon's blood incense is a great magnifier of magic, making it perfect to burn during or before spell casting. Then we have our post ritual grounding tea. This guy. This very calming caffeine free tea is a favorite for post ritual grounding. I already told you what was in it and it just tells you how steep it. 
It will give you a calming, serene feeling to help bring your energy back down to earth. Then we have our turmeric salve I've already put on my elbow. I keep the salve on hand for a gentle treatment for joint pain and inflammation. If you are sensitive to joint relief salve because of the cayenne, then this is a great alternative to use. Wrap the area you apply to it with a cloth or bandage so that it doesn't stain your clothing or furniture. It did have a, I don't know if you got, yeah, you probably can't see anything. It did have kind of a yellowish um, color, but whatever. And then we have our moon on the zodiac calendar. This is a monthly calendar that will be included in every month's box. Many of us form a lot of our practices around the cycles of the moon. We do this because the moon controls a lot of energy on earth and within our bodies. It is very important in understanding what energies we are surrounded with so we can use this energy accordingly. Um, yes, I don't know if it tells you, it does. It tells you what sign the moon is in, so this is also good. I have an app that also, I know that at all times, but um, if you don't use that and you like the paper situation, this has it on it. Um, and the uh, month's calendar was designed by Samantha Ikea. I-K-E-A. Samantha? Do you own Ikea? I love Ikea. Okay. Note that we have two retrogrades in May, so it is important to be aware of this energy so that we can direct it in a positive direction. So Melissa is, that's what I thought. Her name, Melissa is the um, Sacred Space Crate owner. And if you guys are interested, I will leave the link below to this box. I honestly love this box so much. It is one of my absolute favorites. There's always super unique items. I feel like it's not the same old, same old stuff. Um, she does a great job of keeping it fresh. So yeah, what do you guys think? I'd love if you'd give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below what you think of the box. What is your favorite item? Uh, I don't know. I love the wand. The wand is fab. And then this journal is just amazeballs. So this has been a great, great box. Um, if you guys aren't a current subscriber, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. I literally have like four more boxes sitting on my floor and more to come. So you're going to be seeing more videos. <laughs> um, again, guys, thanks. I appreciate you. If you are a current subscriber, I really thank you guys so much. It's so much more fun to do this with you guys. And um, when you guys interact with me in the comments, it makes my day. So again, thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye, guys.